Hi, welcome to this Code Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the rational or rational numbers practice questions. If you need any extra help on rational numbers or rational numbers, if you go to codemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 230, there's a video tutorial there on rational and rational numbers. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on going through the solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says circle the rational numbers. So remember, rational numbers are numbers that are, you know, whole numbers that can be written as fractions. So pi is irrational, so we're not going to circle that. It goes on forever without a pattern. The square root of 9 is 3, so that's rational. 0 0.1111 reoccurring, well, that's a ninth as a fraction. You can write recurring decimals as fractions, so that's rational. We can write it as a fraction, so that's rational. The square root of 2 cannot be expressed as a fraction, so that's irrational. 4 is rational and a third is rational. So the rational numbers would be the square root of 9, 0 0.111 reoccurring, 4, and a third. And the rational numbers would be pi and the square root of 2. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 2. So question number 2 says, Katie says that 0 0.6666 reoccurring is irrational because it is a recurring decimal. Is Katie correct? Explain your answer. Well, recurring decimals can be written as fractions, and fractions are rational, so therefore Katie is incorrect. 0 0.666 reoccurring is 0 0.666 and so on is equal to two thirds. That's expressed as a fraction, so it's rational. So let's explain that. And that's it. So if you just written down, recurring decimals can be written as fractions, so they are rational. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says, write down a rational number. So we could write down any whole number or integer. Um, I'm going to write down three quarters. So three quarters is a rational number. It's expressed as a fraction, so it's rational. Okay, question number four. Question number four says, write down an irrational number. So I'm going to give an example as pi. Pi is irrational. It can't be expressed as a fraction. Or perhaps the square root of seven, and so on. So they are examples of irrational numbers. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, x is an irrational number between seven and ten. Write down a value of x. So we want to find a possible value of x, and that's between 7 and 10. So what we could do is we could choose a number that's not a square number, and we could square root it. And as long as we know the answer is between 7 and 10, then it would be irrational. So for instance, we know the square root of 49 is equal to 7, and we know the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So if, for instance, we chose something like the square root of 50, the answer is going to be 7 point something. So that's going to be an irrational number between 7 and 10. So I'm going to choose, for instance, the square root of 50, or the square root of 80, they're irrational numbers. Alternatively, we could use something like pi to help us, because we know pi is irrational, so that's 3.14 and so on. If we times it by 3, we'd get 9 point something, and that's between 7 and 10. So 3 pi would also be an irrational number between 7 and 10. So there are some examples, 3 pi, or the square root of 50, or the square root of 80, or the square root of 99, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 6. So question number six says, why is an irrational number between three and four? Find a value for y. Well, the one that's jumping to mind is pi, pi 3.14159. It's irrational as between three and four. Alternatively, we could consider those square roots again, because remember the square root of nine is equal to three, and the square root of 16 is equal to four. So if we do the square root of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, they would all be between three and four, and they'd be irrational. So for instance, we could have the square root of 11, or the square root of 14, and so on. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, the square root of z is a rational number between the square root of 105 and the square root of 135. And we've been asked to find the value of z. Now, if it's a rational number, that means that it has to be a square number because we're square rooting it, and it's going to be something that we can square root to give us a rational number. So we're looking for a square number that's between 105 and 135. Now I'm thinking 11 squared. 11 squared is 121. 11 times 11 is equal to 121. So the square root of 121 is rational because it's 11, and that means that z is 121. And that's it. So the z is 121. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 8. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says, which of these equations have rational solutions? So we've got these three equations, equation one, equation two, and equation three. And let's solve them all and see which ones give us rational solutions and which one gives us irrational solutions. So let's start off with equation one. If I was solving this equation, the first thing I would do is I would multiply both sides by three to get rid of this three on the denominator. So I'd multiply by three and multiply by three. On the left-hand side, you'd just be left with, well, two-thirds times three is two, so that'll be two x squared. 
And on the right hand side, we had 26. We multiply by 3, that's going to be equal to 78. So that's 78. Now we've got 2 times x squared. Well, let's divide by 2 and divide by 2. So we're going to get that x squared is equal to, and half of 78 is 39. So that's 39. And then the square root of 39 is irrational. So x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 39. So that's irrational. That would not be rational, those solutions. Okay, next, equation number two, let's solve this. So if I was solving this, I'd multiply both sides of the equation by six to begin with. So on the left-hand side, we had five sixths. We're multiplying that by six, that's five. So that's five x squared equals. And 120 times six, that's gonna be 720. And you could just call a method of multiplication to work that out. Now we're gonna divide by five and divide by five. So the left-hand side will become x squared. And on the right-hand side, if we do 720 divided by five, well, 720, divided by five, that's going to be equal to, how many fives go into seven? That's going to be equal to one, remainder two. How many fives go into 22? That's four, remainder two. And how many fives go into 20? That's four. So we've got x squared is equal to 144. So the number squared is 144, so that's going to be 12 or negative 12. So x is equal to plus, so x is equal to plus or minus 12. So we've got two solutions there and they're both rational. So which of these equations have rational solutions? I'm thinking equation two or equation two does have rational solutions. That's a possible answer. Let's just check and see if equation three has rational solutions or not. So we've got two sevenths x squared equals 100. So let's multiply both sides by seven. So two sevenths multiplied by seven is two. So we've got two x squared equals 700. Then dividing by two, divide by two and divide by two, we'd get x squared equals 350. And then that means x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 350. And 350 is not a square number, so that's going to be irrational. So equation one, irrational solutions. Equation three, irrational solutions. Equation two, rational solutions. So our answer is equation two. So equation two. So answer is equation two. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. Okay, let's have a look at question number nine. So question number nine says, the radius of a circle is 10 over pi centimeters. And we've been asked, is the circumference of the circle rational or irrational? And to explain our answer. So we've got a circle, let's just do a quick sketch. So we've got a circle, like so. And we're told that it's radius, so the distance from the center to the edge is 10 over pi centimeters. And we want to find the circumference of the circle. So to find the circumference of the circle, we're going to do pi times diameter. The circumference equals pi times diameter. So to get the diameter, we need to double the radius. So we need to multiply this by two. So if we had 10 over pi, we're gonna multiply by two, which is the same as two over one. 10 times two is 20, and pi times one is pi. So the diameter of the circle will be 20 over pi. So the circumference of the circle, circumference equals pi times diameter, the diameter is 20 over pi. So the circumference of the circle will be pi times 20 over pi. So we just need to work this out. So pi, remember, is pi over one, because it's just pi over one, if we want to write it as a fraction. And let's multiply these and see what we get. 20 times pi would be 20 pi. And on the denominator, we've got one times pi, that's just pi. So we've got 20 pi over pi. Well, we can cancel out the pi, so we're left with 20 over one, which is just 20. So the circumference of the circle is 20 centimeters, and that is rational. So that's it, so let's just explain that. And I've just written down the circumference of the circle is 20 centimetres, which is rational. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10, we've been given this equation, 5x squared equals k. And we're told the equation above could have rational or irrational solutions. And we've been asked to write a value for k, which gives rational solutions. So if we look at this equation, if I was to solve this equation, for instance, 5x squared equals k, if I was to solve it, the first thing I would do is to divide by 5 and divide by 5. And then that would give me x squared, because 5x squared divided by 5 is x squared, equals, and then I would get k divided by 5, whatever this number is, divided by 5. And if this bit, for instance, is a square number, then I know that, for instance, if this was 144, well, the square, if I had x squared equals 144, that means that x would be equal to 12 or negative 12. So if I can square root this value here, then that would give me rational solutions. So let's, for instance, choose what number would, whenever we divide it by 5, gives us 144. So 144 multiplied by 5 is equal to, 144 multiplied by 5 is 720. So if k was 720, we would have 5x squared equals 720. We could divide by 5 and divide by 5, 
we would get x squared equals 144, and that means that x would be equal to 12 or negative 12, or plus or minus 12. So they would be rational solutions. We could choose another number that whenever we divide it by 5, we would get a square number. So I'm thinking 20. If k was equal to 20, 5x squared equals 20. If you divide by 5 and divide by 5, you would get x squared equals 4, and then that means x equals plus or minus 2. They're rational solutions. So there's some options so far, 720 or 20. Another option could be zero. For instance, if we had 5x squared equals zero, dividing by 5, you get x squared equals zero, and that means that x equals zero, and that means that x equals zero, and that's rational. Zero is rational, so that's another answer. And that's it. Okay, and then part B, we've been asked to give a value for k which would give a rational solutions. So I'm going to try a number such as 8. Let's see what we get if we had 8. So we had 5x squared equals 8. If we divide by 5 and divide by 5, we get x squared equals 1.6. And that means that x equals plus or minus the square root of 1.6. And this is a calculator question. And if you work out the square root of 1.6, you get that's 2 root 10 over 5 or 1.264911064 and so on. So that would be a rational solution. So the value for k, which would give a rational solution, so you could choose 8 or you could try other numbers and see if they would be irrational as well. OK, let's have a look at another question. So question number 11. So question number 11 says below is a right angle triangle ABC. And the question says, is the length of BC? this length is it rational or irrational so let's use Pythagoras' theorem because we've got the length of the longer side the hypotenuse and length of one of the shorter sides so we could use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of this side so let's label the sides of our triangle well, let's call a the shortest b the middlest <laughs> and c the largest the hypotenuse the one opposite the right angle and let's write down Pythagoras' theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared so a squared that's going to be four squared plus b squared well that's just let's call it b squared equals c squared and c squared would be 15 squared let's work out these values 4 squared is 16 plus b squared equals and 15 squared well 15 times 15 is 225 now if we were to solve this equation we would now take away 16 and take away 16 so you get on the left hand side b squared equals and then we've got 225 take away 16 and that's equal to 209 so we now know the value of this length squared is 209, but we want the length of this side, so we're going to square root. So x equals the square root of 209. Now, 209 isn't a square number, so whenever we square root it, we're going to get something that's irrational. So the square root of 209 is irrational. So is the length of BC rational or irrational? The answer is irrational. Okay, let's have a look at question number 12. So question number 12 says, show that 5 minus the square root of 2, so that's irrational, multiplied by 5 plus the square root of 2, that's irrational, and we're to show that whenever we multiply them together, that's rational. So let's expand our brackets. 5 times 5 is 25. Then we've got 5 times positive root 2, so that's going to be plus 5 root 2. And then we've got minus root 2 times 5 is going to be minus 5 root 2, minus 5 lots of root 2, because a negative times a positive is a negative, and we've got 5 root 2, so it's minus 5 root 2. And then finally, minus root 2 times positive root 2. Well, a negative times a positive is a negative, and root 2 times root 2, whether well, it be root 4, which is just 2, or root 2 times root 2 is just 2, so it's going to be minus 2. So we've now got that when we expand our brackets, we get 25 plus 5 lots of root 2 minus 5 lots of root 2 minus 2. Well, here we've got 5 lots of root 2 take away 5 lots of root 2, so that's going to be, there I can't say that, that'd be 0. And then we've got 25 take away 2. And 25 take away 2 is equal to 23. And I think that's class, that so we have something that's irrational, we multiply it by something that's irrational, and we get 23. And that's it, so we've shown it. Fantastic. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. Okay, so question number 13. So question number 13 says, circle the rational numbers. So let's start off with our first one. We've got the cube root of 8. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's 2. So that's rational, so let's circle it. Next, we've got the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 2. So make sure you've watched the video on thirds and you know your laws of thirds, so that whenever you divide a third by another third, you can just divide what's underneath the square root. So the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 2 would be the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So that's rational as well. Next, we've got pi divided by 2. Now, pi divided by 2 or pi over 2, that would be irrational, so that's irrational. And then we've got root 15 divided by root 3. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so that's the square root of 5. And that's irrational because 5 isn't a square number, so that's going to be irrational. So circle the rational numbers. They are going to be the cube root of 8 and root 8 divided by root 2. 
Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 says, show that 7 root 12 over 2 root 3 is rational. Now we could approach this in two different ways. We could do it just using division. So we could divide the numbers by the numbers and the third by the third. So we would have 7 over 2, well it's going to be 7 over 2. And then we've got root 12 divided by root 3. And root 12 divided by root 3, well 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that'll be the square root of 4. So we would have 7 over 2 multiplied by the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2, so we've got 7 over 2 times 2. Well, 7 over 2 times 2, well, that's 2 over 1, so that'll be 14 over 2, which is equal to 7. So if we had 7 root 12 divided by 2 root 3, the answer would just be 7. And that's it. So that's one way we could show that. Another way is to rationalize the denominator. So we had 7 root 12 over 2 root 3. And if I wanted to rationalize the denominator here, I would multiply both the numerator and the denominator by root 3. So we could multiply both the numerator and denominator by root 3. And if we do that, we get, well, on the numerator, we would have 7. And then we've got the square root of 12 times the square root of 3. That's going to be root 36. And on the denominator, we would have 2. And then we've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Well, that's going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So 2 times 3. So that would be 7 times the square root of 36, which is 6. So 7 times 6 over 2 times 3. 7 times 6 is 42. And 2 times 3 is 6. And we've got 42 divided by 6, which is 7. So that's it. So we could do it in two different ways. We could do division. So you could do 7 root 12 divided by 2 root 3. 7 over 2 is just 7 over 2. And then you've got root 12 divided by root 3, which is root 4. Root 4 is 2. And double 7 over 2 would be 14 over 2, which is 7. Or 3.5 times 2 is 7. And that's it. Alternatively, you could rationalize the denominator, multiplying both the numerator and denominator by root 3. So that would give you 7 root 36 over 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So you've got 42 over 6, which is 7 as well. So we've shown it's rational. Okay, and let's look at our last question, question number 15. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 15. So question number 15 says, find two different thirds that when you multiply them together, give rational numbers. So what I'm thinking is, if we could think of two numbers that whenever we multiply them together, we get a square number, then that would be helpful. So for instance, if I had the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 27, well, 3 times 27 is 81, so that's the square root of 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. So that would be our two thirds. Our two thirds could be the square root of 3 and the square root of 27. And neither of those are rational, they're both irrational. So that would be an irrational number. Multiply by a rational number gives us a rational answer. Okay. Alternatively, we could choose other numbers. We could have the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 32. Because the square root of 2 is irrational, the square root of 32 is irrational. When you multiply them together, you get the square root of 64. That's 8, which is rational. So therefore, an irrational times an irrational is irrational. So these two thirds would work. You could, for instance, have the square root of 3 times the square root of 12 and so on. So as long as you choose two thirds, that so whenever you multiply the numbers together, you get the square root of a square number, and then that would be rational. That's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions, the rational and irrational numbers practice questions on corporate maths. I really hope you find this video useful. If you need any extra help on this topic, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 230, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on rational and irrational numbers. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're focused on the video solutions to the practice questions. So I hope you find it useful. And um, if you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.